Colts rolling early in camp. One of the guys that I wanted to talk to is Tony Soprano Jr., who's the offensive line coach. How the offensive line goes, that's how the team goes. That's the way this thing is built, this offense. We're going to talk to Tony Soprano about putting together that line and kind of righting the wrongs of last year. But this is completely different. How do you kind of coach them into what this is? Well, the great thing is, again, like I said, the spring, we're, we were focused from day one about the past is irrelevant to us moving forward. We're focused on building our foundation and our chemistry as a group together. I'm huge into the group of five guys. Whichever five are out there playing as one entity, we can't have a bunch of independent contractors out there as an offensive line. It's got to be about the group. So for us, we're focused on continuing to build that chemistry as a group. Again, we started that in the spring. I was really pleased with where we were there, getting better fundamentally. We're continuing that right now. And everything's about just getting better technically, fundamentally, knowing the scheme inside and out one day at a time. And, and that's the focus. The guys have been working really hard, and I've been pleased with it so far. How do you evaluate these guys? A guy like Will Fries, who's mm -hmm. been at right guard, he's started against a guy like, say, Emil Echior. Are they on equal standing as far as you're concerned, or well, how's that work? Well, Will's working with the, with the starting group, and Emil's starting, starting off with our twos and threes, working through some things as a young player. But they're both going to get opportunities out there. Uh, to compete for a job on this team and a job on this line. Uh, we've got a really good defensive line, and especially those interior guys. Uh, it's really great for us to be able to go against them every day. Um, it's a great measuring stick when you're playing against guys like Buck and Grover in there, uh, and certainly even the guys that we have behind those guys. Uh, it's really, really good measuring stick for our players because if you can block them, uh, you can block most D tackles in this league. So just evaluating every rep, every situation that they're in, and, and at the end of the day, seeing where we're at. Is Braden Smith the right tackle, period? Braden Smith's the right tackle. Okay. There's a lot of trust put in this offensive line, not a lot of turnover with it during the, uh, the offseason. Obviously, there's some struggles in the, the first half of last season. Mm -hmm. But how can you speak to this group now that you've been around them for a while? Like, Why was there so much trust put in these guys? Uh, you know, again, I wasn't here last year, and I'm not going to speak on, on last year because I wasn't here. And again, to me, that's irrelevant. Uh, what I'm focused on is from day one, getting this group together and moving forward and building our identity. It's a different system. It's a different group than last year. There's different players. Certainly myself and my assistant, Chris Watt, and our whole staff are new. So to me, that's irrelevant. It's about tear out the page, brand new deal moving forward. It's a clean slate for everybody, myself included. And how do we build the dynamic of our group moving forward and what we're going to be about? That's what the focus has been on. So for me, it's been about just bringing guys together. Again, they're not familiar with me. You know, heading into the spring, I wasn't familiar with them. Getting to know each other and getting to know, again, coach to player, player to player, and player to coach. How can we build that bond and, and be as strong as we can be? 15 players, two coaches in that room, and get the best out of the group. And that's what the focus has been on. So, again, to me, I'm really pleased with how these guys have worked, the way they've bought into what we're doing as an offense and as an offensive line, and the investment they've made into each other. Uh, of truly trying to, to bond as a unit. Because again, for me, the offensive line uh, scheme is, is, is really important, technique's really important. If you're not five as one and you're not playing as a unit and, and you're not on the same page with each other, I think the other stuff is relevant. I think that's where it starts and that's where it ends. So for me, that, that, that is paramount. What are the hallmarks of just your coaching style and what points you're trying to emphasize to these guys when you say like you want them to be a certain way or have a certain approach? Well, everything we do is going to be physical. Uh, we're going to be aggressive. We're going to play hard. Uh, I want us to set the tone for the offense physically, uh, and I want us to put on tape uh, weeks in advance uh, what, what people are in store for when they play against us. Uh, I want our guys playing for each other and having fun. Uh, you know, Obviously, there's a lot more that goes into it in terms of the technical details and things like that. Uh, but I want our guys playing on the front foot and being aggressive, uh, and, and I want them playing together uh, and having fun together. Uh, to, to me, uh, this is a kid's game uh, at, at very, you know, at the heart of it. You know, I played as long as I could play. I know it's shocking. I never played in the league, but, you know, I mean, you look at me, you think I might have. But, um, you, you know, you play this game as long as you can, uh, coach the game as long as you can. And, and to me, it, there's still an element about that's got to be about playing for the man next to you and, and, and having fun doing it. And I think that's really important. That enthusiasm, that brotherhood, again, to me, that that is often overlooked. And I think there's no substitute for it. Guys like Q and, and Ryan, obviously no trouble with motivation there. How have you seen them kind of take charge with this group? I, I, I think all three of the veteran players we have, whether it's Quentin, whether it's Ryan, whether it's Braden, have done a tremendous job from the first day of 
taking ownership of this group and leading in their own way. All three of those guys, their impact has been felt by every player in there, myself, uh, and it's really appreciated because, I, again, uh, leadership's got to come from me as the coach, but player-driven leadership is a big thing because those guys are the ones out there. And, and a lot of times, you know, hearing something from one of your peers uh, can carry even more weight than hearing it from a coach. So uh, they've been really great uh, in their own way that's, that's unique to their personality. Not every leader is the same, right? And leadership has a million different forms. And to me, the most important thing was that they are genuine to who they are in terms of their personality and just take ownership of this group and run with it. And the three of them have all done a great job of that. How good can Ryman be? I think he can be a really good player in this league. I'm, I'm really excited about him. Thought he had a really good spring and was 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 on an upward trajectory, and he's picked up where he left off so far. We're in the early days of camp. Look, you know, it, it, it's everyone's a the year one to year two. He knows what to expect now. I thought he did some really good things watching him last year, yeah. and I'm excited to see him take another step forward. Right now, the focus for him is just again, like everybody else. What can we get better at each day? You know, can we get better at one or two things every day and get a little bit better in terms of technique, understanding of the scheme? Uh, because as we all know, this is a marathon. It's not a sprint in the National Football League, and it's about consistency. Do you mind if I ask you about something? Yeah, Maybe absolutely. I, what's the ring? Oh, that's my wedding ring. Is it? Oh. That's my wedding ring. All right. Yeah, Perfect. yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it, uh, you know what? My finger got a little bigger than when this was initially sized. Yeah, and so I started getting, you know, my circulation a little bit. Yeah, so I, I threw But the chain, uh, the significance of the chain, this was my dad's. Uh, okay. And it, it's been five years since we lost him. And uh, so I, I wear this for him. How much of his enthusiasm for football did you inherit or learn? Uh, you know what? Uh, I learned a a ton uh, from watching him. Uh, one of the things that, that I take the most pride in is uh, he was always genuine to himself. Uh, he cared about people. He cared about his players. He cared about the guys he worked with. Um, I watched him put his heart into everything he did, and that's the way I go about things. Um, that's genuine to my personality, and, uh, you know, it, it, it's – it's refreshing being able to just be true to yourself and genuine to yourself and, and let that be enough. You know what I mean? And, and I watched him do that and, and coach his way, and um, it inspired me to do the same thing. How hard is it to care about guys that you might have a role? I mean, you got too many guys mm -hmm. right now, right? Absolutely. Some of them are going home. Mm -hmm. How do you care about them while evaluating them kind of with that that kind of eye? Well, you know, because uh, it's the National Football League, right? And that's my job. And my commitment is to put the best group together for those guys on this team that I possibly and that we possibly can. That's part of it. So I care about every single one of those guys deeply as, as, as people and as professionals, and I'm going to pour as much as I possibly can into every one of them to help them be the best they can be. And at that point, hey, when, when we determine who makes the roster, it's the best guys make the roster, and that's the nature of the National Football League. It doesn't mean you don't care about guys personally. It's just that's the nature of the beast. Perfect. Thank you so much. Of course. Thank you. That's Tony Sperano, offensive line coach for the Indianapolis Colts, and that's a wise guy, and what a good hire, right? You can tell guys when they exude leadership and they know what the hell they're talking about and they know how to get what's necessary to get out of people, not just traits, not, hey, he's 6'5", 310, he's got long arms, he's got a good first step, but taking the people and putting them in a position to do what they can as well as they can, that's leadership. And that's what it seems Tony Sperano Jr. has got a lot of. Great guy to talk to.